My name is Aram, my pronouns are he, him, and welcome to Rise of the Demigods. Rise takes place just before the breaking of the world, when the old gods sought to bolster their claim on Kalgun by siring demigod offspring to rule it. Their divine children laid waste to whole continents in their name, and many mortals of the realms grew to despise them. Coalitions were formed and armies marched upon their divine creator, slaughtering many of the demigods and threatening the rule of the gods themselves. Desperate to halt this erosion, the old gods called a council to deal with the demigod issue once and for all. It was decreed that each god was allowed to claim three demigod offspring. Those who were born on claim must prove their worth through training and trials in the divine halls and magical valleys of the Temple of Udea. Our story begins with four such young demigods, ripped from their homes and families by seekers who work for the temple. For more about our story, including pre-orders for the Rise of the Demigods book, head over to demigodsfall.com and follow us on Twitter at demigodsfall. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Wilkes. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am playing Astrid Elvea, the wild elf ranger scout. Hi, my name is Arvi, and my pronouns are he, him, and I'm playing Janus de Cassiel, who is an Asimar bard. Hi, uh, my name is Joey, or Gnome, and I go by he, his, him pronouns, you know, the masculine pronouns, and uh, I will be playing Theodore, who is a Gnome Eldritch Knight. Hi, my name is Nikki, my pronouns are they, them, or him, his, and I am playing Saint Barb, the human monk, the human monk, the only human monk ever to exist. I wonder if his godparent has been giving him information as well. Maybe he knows things we don't know. So we should find Scritches and Zendar. And Zendar. All right. So you all get to eat, or are you just going to pick up and go looking around? Well, well how do you I... like to handle hunger in this game? I mean, You're I'm fine. probably... We, you guys I, could grab some I, crescent I, rolls um, on the way out. Can I, like, put my hand on my chest? Can I pop into Luna's site and see if she's found anything? Sure. If she's found Zendar, if she's found clues... Roll me a survival for hunting. For hunting. Well, um, or tracking. Is she smelling? Well, because she has advantage yeah. on perception related to hearing and smell. Yeah, actually, roll me perception with advantage because yeah. she's definitely tracking she, by if smell. If she's smelling him. Um, that's going to be a 20 not natural. Okay. Has not found Zendar. However, has picked up on Scritch's scent. Scritch's. Okay. So I assume she's just sort of. Just wait, telling you. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you ask her to look for Scritches? I asked her to look for Zendar. Yeah, just happened to be passing a room with Scritches sent. Yeah. What room is it? Uh, it is a... She looks up. It is this small office towards the front that's not occupied. At least you didn't know it was occupied, and you didn't know that any of the teachers were in there. Okay, and then I... But then I... Because yeah, I don't really... I mean, I assume we communicate the same way of familiar. Yeah. Yeah, so I just told her to keep looking for Zendar. Well. And then I pop back out, and I, I say... Um, I think I know where Scritches is if we want to go to him. So you jumped into the mine link and then jumped into him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I was like, I was like, hold, hold my beer, let me go see my wolf. <laughs> um, yeah, but I can still as a, well, no, I can't. Never mind. I, I, I always forget how familiar stuff works. I can still like talk to you guys. I just can't see or hear, right? right. And know how familiar? Yeah, thing? I yeah. think so. So I say, I know where Scr uh, Luna found Scritches, but she's still looking for Zenda. Well, um, well, let's go look for Scritches. Yeah, then. Wait, where's where's Scritches? Some. Do I know like where? I mean, I, I saw. Yeah, a small office right off the arboretum on the north, on the north small side. Small office right off the arboretum on the <laughs> north side. Can't miss it. Yeah, can't miss it. It's right labeled a big S. It looks exactly <laughs> like that one actually, mm -hmm. uh, right there. No. Uh, if you've hit the red room, you've gone too you've gone far. Way too far. You've gone, Traitors you've gone to east, within. If you've gone to east red, you've yeah. gone too far. Um, I'm gonna. Can I take myself out of the mind link? What, yeah. are, the, what are the rules? Of not, yeah, you we guys can leave when you want. Right. I, I thought we were in it. Oh, I thought we went out and then I went to Luna. No, know. we were in the mind link. Yeah, we you can leave whenever you want. Anyway, okay. So I uh, immediately after I hear where Scritches is, I I clock out, get up. Um, I'll grab a sweet roll. Yeah, 
It's and, and, totally. and it's very cool. It's very anime. I'm like, mm. <laughs> just start <laughs> very cool, very anime. Yeah, and uh, start start walking towards right. the office. Do yeah. you all head out? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, you all head out. As you're walking down the hallway, oh, since we since we haven't had a hallway scene, scene yet. Hallway yeah. scene. Yeah. Hallway scene. Yep. Hello, everybody. Fucking Welcome God. to the hallway yep. section Thank of God. the podcast. Absolutely. All right. Walking towards you you're in the have hallway. Music playing, by the way. Is Archon Cardani. <laughs> oh, students. Wait, she's the students. Books, right. Yeah, we like Good her. to I see you her. all. How come yes, you weren't at the Cardani? Astrid. Pleasure to see you. I believe this is what you were asked for. Subtle. Have a good evening. Subtle. <laughs> she keeps walking. <laughs> Fucking hell. We all have like our can, eyes can, wide yeah. open. Like, <laughs> can, you, can you please just roll a side of hand so I can decide whether <laughs> sure. or not to make the thousands of jokes in my oh, head? Oh, Arca could already roll an 18. Plus, uh, should it be pluses for side of hand? Yeah, so she'd be like a, a 23. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. All right. Okay, so but fine. In the sleeve of her robe, as she grasps your hands, she just slides it down without anyone knowing and then lets go of your hands and continues on. I pocket it. All right. Excellent. For now. Okay. Well, I don't All get right. to make any jokes then. So, and then <laughs> I keep on walking. All right. So you guys walk up to this office that, as far as you knew, had no one in it. Doors. <laughs> the door is closed. Oh, it smells bad. Gross! Yeah. You actually, <laughs> you actually burned it. Yes, I actually burned it. For the listeners at home, bingo! Uh, there's a burned piece of paper in front of me. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I burned it. That's so cool. It's burnt ink. Yeah, wait, probably can you paint the, the word picture of of. Yes, I took a scroll. Well, I took a piece of paper and I cut it to size, and then no, I, I'm talking about in in the oh, world what oh, happens. Sorry, this isn't so, your craft hour. Around. In the world, Archon <laughs> Cardotti passed Patreon the group, handed. Craft. Uh, Astrid, a rolled up piece of paper, nodded to you all, mm-hmm. said pleasantries, and then continued down the hall on okay. her way. That's for you podcast listeners. Yeah. Now you are outside the door of an office that has no name on it. There's no nameplate like the other ones. And the door is closed. I say this is it, I believe. Okay. Um, classic. Come in. Is that the voice? Like... This is both in and out of character. <laughs> Do that I remember? Was, I it's that not was Scritch's the, voice, It's right? not the voice of Scritch's. Oh. Come in. Uh, you guys just want to go. <laughs> Should we? Um, Who, um, who's there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is her name? Uh, <laughs> what is her name? You don't even know who she is. What is her damn uh, and name? And just throws random and people I, in I, random I, rooms. I say kind of quietly, I say, Luna smelled Scritch's in this room. It's Lucille. Lucille. Oh yeah, we've yeah, of course. Oh, it's classic Lucille. As if we've met this person. <laughs> yeah, who the fuck is Lucille? Um, Lucille who? <laughs> well, you know, it's been so long since I've used my last name. I don't know. It's Lucille. <laughs> Her I was making a knock knock joke. Okay. Yeah. Her name is Lucille. Please come in. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> We're all like, come in. <laughs> Wait, really? Wait, no. Oh, no. that'd be so fucking funny. Stop it, Rob. Um, You're very paranoid babies right now. <laughs> yes, you are. Okay, yeah, I'll open the door. All right, you open are we the like door. Are we doing this? And like you're you're in the front. <laughs> and the rest of us are just like uh-huh. off to the side. <laughs> There's a fire going in the fire place. There oh, okay. is <laughs> in the room. It's yes. a blaze. Yes. There it's, are, everything's burning. It's the Aladdin. They go, Hi, you didn't fight me before, but here I am. I'm here now. now. I can put this encounter wherever I want. <laughs> there are. Uh, there's a small bed in here, covered in what looks like a hand knit blanket. There are little hand knit blankets resting over a couple chairs. There's a small little table, and there's an old woman in a rocking chair and in her lap is Scritches and she's just sitting and petting him. Oh, hello, students. Hi. How Hi. are you? I'm not sure if we've met. Lucille, I get up, but... And she reaches to shake your hand. Oh, that's okay. Let me take that cat from you. No, no. Scritches is quite comfortable. You, you leave him be. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know how to ask. Um, I you what? do you own Scritches? Oh, no, no, I don't own him, but we're we're friends. Are you, you a demigod? S- Who are you? Oh no, 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 no! I was. Oh, I'm the custodian. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I'm the demigod of <laughs> knitting. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of want to. She goes on to explain that many, many years ago, uh, Scritches, when Scritches was born, she was a a street urchin. 
and Scritches was just oh, this wait, I think alley cat. You told cat. us about this. Yes. Yeah. You literally yeah. told us about this. Oh, oh my yeah. God, you did tell us this. And so they met as, you know, as kids, basic, basically. And whilst, and while Scritches is more or less immortal, she's not. So the only way they sent seekers after Scritches in first in a single, then in pairs, then a team, could not catch him no matter what they did. So it came down to the little girl basically having to convince a Scritches to come to the temple. Scritches wouldn't go unless she came as well. So that's how she, and then she's just been here ever since. So she's like Scritches caretaker or somebody. Kind of, yeah. His best friend. Yeah, basically. She's his cat. Yeah. yeah. He's his pet. Yeah. 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 What is Grinch is the what does he have power or anything? Mischief. Mischief. I knew it because what the parent was snakes mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and chaos? And, no. and, and oh, snakes and uh, I want to say snakes and birds. I, I got like, I got double check like that. Snakes though. and something, because I remember yeah. we were like snakes, what? Yeah. Yeah. Arvid, you're the only one who went down the right path and shows a concept to have power over. <laughs> 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 um, okay. Uh, hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, young man. Uh, not a man, but that's okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, um, I look back. Does anyone else want to handle this? We <laughs> we would like to talk to Scritches. Actually, Scritches as our teacher stretches and lays back down. Yes, what is it, children? What do you want? Have you just been laying here while the temple has been attacked? The temple was attacked. <laughs> That's uh, on brand. It feels like <laughs> for Scritches. Yeah, there was a big meeting. The, the oh my. Uh, but yeah, more so. Wait. There's, there's uh, yeah, okay. Aram is making. Yeah. Aram okay. Can for we... the listeners at home, Aram is making a fake shocked face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I insight that? Insight yes, that? you can totally insight that. Insight central this this episode yep. apparently. Oh my god, that's gotta, a nineteen. Wait baby. a minute, wait a minute. I gotta, I gotta bring up yeah. thirteen gotta, for me. Oh my god, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bring up. I just like looked over as I after I was done writing and saw Ron being like, what? "Oh my! Oh my! Oh my God! I cannot Are believe you such me? a thing!" I got <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Begins <laughs> purring and is like, "I don't even know." <laughs> no, Scritch is definitely lying. Um, might as well have winked. You know. <laughs> Uh, I, cl- I close the door behind us also because we didn't really Douche. do that. Well, yeah. I mean, there's, a, there's that thing that we wanted to uh, show him in our room. You remember with the trunk? We have a question about that. Which is just kind of glares. <laughs> I believe I know all I need to know about that trunk. Yeah, <laughs> you think, um, but there's actually just this really crazy thing. Oh, God. Um, There's a monster in the trunk. Okay. Oh, oh! Instead of this, we could say scratches. A monster. Is is no offense, Lucille. Don't mean to talk about you while you're standing right here. Is Lucille safe to talk in front of freely? Of course she is. Aren't you, my dear? Why, yes. Do you share everything you know with her? So when we ask you a question. But is it safe to talk out loud right now? We still have a truly safe to talk. Can here. you mind link not us? Yeah, Janice, mm-hmm. can we just Janice, all right. can we we're, I'm gonna we're gonna take I'm gonna take all of us into a safer place. Including Lucille? Sure, why not? No, 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 no. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Uh, why? Lucille <laughs> gonna notice us. Oh my gosh. She's adorbs. All right, so you're all heading into the Mind Palace? Why is Lucille here? I'm wildly mind uncomfortable. Palace. I'm <laughs> wildly <laughs> uncomfortable in front of her. Right. Lucille oh, is now sitting in one of these chairs, like these over plush chairs. She's like, oh, and she just found knitting needles and is lovely. And she, she just That's begins right. to start knitting. See, things just appear here. Yep. <laughs> and Scritches is kind of strutting through the space. Oh, this will do nicely. Can someone please help this conversation? Um, I, I just can't right now. Did you? I'm going to just cut straight to all the chases. Did you sure. leave us a note? Did I leave you a note? St. Bob specifically. Not for me. What other S names are in the temple? Janice, can you not do anything? To S names in the temple. The First names. No, someone oh, who really. would sign a letter with the letter S. Well, there's Sosomu. 
They're slugs? If it was slugs, I'm going to lose it was, my slugs. mind. <laughs> Slugs does not have handwriting like that. We That's go true. to Slugs and Slugs is is like, mm, yes, you found my secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually Slugs. Um, w- uh, Wouldn't that be amazing? Was it was it pretty handwriting? Do we actually know that, or is it like was it? I yeah, is it as written it's, or it's is the it, handwriting is, is as the person? Can I specifically sp- wrote it like the handwriting fonts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's yeah. no way Slugs writes like that. Yeah. So, but so so someone Slugs and scratches are the three S's in the temple. Yeah. Well. You were lying earlier. When? When we asked you about the temple. We know you, you know something. Oh, things happened. Things always happen. Who was like I lying what about? sort of things? And he comes over and kind of like rubs up against you, little tail in the oh. air. I there are, petting scratches. <laughs> there's always things that happen in the temple leap up into your lap. What exactly do you want to know? Exposes belly. Oh my god. Bites. <laughs> but not hard. Yeah, not HR, hard. HR, like, HR, HR, yeah. HR. Yeah. This, is, this is the first problem I had with scratches. <laughs> um, I think, what what hand did you have on the attack on the temple? And, like, a cat's can't laugh, but he kind of, like, it meow, almost meow, sounds meow. like he's expelling a furball. And, and he just, like, like <laughs> no, nothing. I would not attack the temple temple is my home i'm not saying you attacked it. i'm saying you helped others attack it i helped no one i heard of the students do you know the the attackers oh yes <laughs> scratch scratch, scratch. Yeah. Yeah, i get advantage <laughs> if i scratch <laughs> his belly <laughs> oh, yes. oh yes 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 I, I i know of all the attackers especially the one in here smelled that feral half breed from a mile away what? What? okay why is it <laughs> what <laughs> Well, You're talking about the, the tabaxi. The tabaxi, yeah. That's what they're called, yes. Okay, so that's what you can call them. You Why fuck. is everyone being so mean to this tabaxi? <laughs> Jeepers on a stick. Mm, then we got a sabotage. I think that's cool. Listen up, yo, it's a sabotage. They have cool. the, all these these angsty boys are really cool divinities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, toads and bones. Um, scritches. Agile uh, smoke is a lady kitty. I said boys with an eye. Gotcha. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> All yeah, these boys. Run and hide. I don't know. <laughs> um, w- uh, do but I have any of my belongings more. on me? Like what? In, in this, in this. That's not a question to Scritch. Just don't answer that voice. Um, like in this mind realm, do I have like? Oh, belongings I mean, on anything me? you yeah. would imagine you'd normally be yeah. carrying. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull out the letter that's been flattened sure. in my notebook, just like in real life. Um, and I'm going to fold it up so it just says my name, mm-hmm. just like this. Sure. And I'm going to say, do you recognize... Nice, I'm this holding handwriting. it tightly. Sure. I see you rolling. Um, it, do you recognize this handwriting? It squints and looks. I hold it away from him. It squints even closer. <laughs> I can't read. You're useless. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you roll if he can't even read? <laughs> How are you a teacher if you can't even switches. read? <laughs> Fuck you, Ryan. Okay, Janice, I want to go. <laughs> you even rolled high. I like, looked over and saw it was a decent roll, too. Sorry. I mean, if it's just about that, you we could just go. go. I want to go. We could go through okay. people's belongings and like find handwriting samples from Sosomu and Slug. Truth. But so what Scritches said... W- was demeaning the the tabaxi who came in the student that came in here and attacked mm-hmm. the temple correct so clearly not a fan yeah this is the second person we've heard shit on this specific tabaxi as well but you you somehow like scritches you know something yes i know many things I've been uh, here for years God. decades even question so there are windows right now in this palace oh yes there's a window right behind us and i'm out um this is for a romp oh gotcha stop it get out of this character so hard for you (laughs) sorry um and there are windows that see the room that we're in uh okay so all of the offices are up against the the arboretum well i'm I'm asking the windows look into the arboretum the the palette the mind palace janice's mind palace yes there are windows out to the real world question mark yes correct and so i'm now out of the mind palace right and so i'm moving around and they can see me yes correct and janice let me out yes can people get out on their will yeah anyone can leave whenever they want can i make them stay you can't make them stay in the mind palace yeah. 
Regardless, I'm going to uh, start trying to sneakily, stealthily, sleight of handy, uh, look through the room and try to find something. Roll me an investigation. And can I also? This, that was not one of the skills I said. Um, <laughs> I yeah, sneakily mind. and stealthily. Can I ask Scritches? Um, can I ask you something personal? Of course. 17. Nice. Hang on one second. Thank Do you. you and maybe this is just me assuming things about you. Do you harbor any ill will towards the other demigods in this temple because of what they put you through? Could you just thinks for a moment. Because I would be angry if I were you. Well, you have to understand. I've had a very long time to live. I've been able to think about things. Upset? No. They took me from the streets. Filthy thing that I was. And gave me a home. Didn't they throw you to the flames immediately because of your birth? Yes, they did. But the gods demanded that. If I have anyone to be angry at, it's them. But this temple is in service of the gods. Yes, it is. And the mortals. So... A bit of each. How can you work here? Well... It's... That. I'd rather not be hunted again. I like where I am. It's comfortable. I like comfort. So you're complacent? It's a fair statement. I was just curious because I, f- I just thought that I'd be angry if I were you. But I guess that's good that you're not. Not anymore. Not for some time. While you're doing this, Mm -hmm. there is, you were a 17, there is a sheet of paper, like kind of on the top, there's a whole bunch of folders and files here, all clearly things that should be on Harold Scritch's desk that this woman, Lucille, seems to be going through, almost like his secretary, right? And right on top of it is... A uh, list of seekers and the targets that they're going after. Can I read any of that information? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, roll me a stealth to see if you can get away with it. Twelve. Okay, you're able to read the first two lines before you see uh, Scritches flip over in her lap and kind of leap up onto the desk and land on the piece of paper in front of you. Curious about anything? Yeah, the paper you're on. Ah, Um, well. You said I could read the first line? Yeah, so the first two lines. So I will get you that information, but but there are two seekers and their next targets to bring demigods into the temple. That's what, so that's the, like, and there's dates next to it of like a week ago. Okay, I'd I want... I will get you those names shortly. Okay, I'd want to pick up Scritches. You want to pick up Scritches? Yes. Okay, uh, Scritches you is... Me grab by the way, them. we're no longer yeah. in the mind palace. Yeah, now. Scritches Did is definitely going yeah. to resist. Okay. Yeah. Hey, team, you want to help me pick up Scritches real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Bob, it's Why? a cat. It's not hard to pick I up. I know, thank you. That's I agree. So let's all do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you the cat up. couldn't control him. I'm not going to try to pick yeah, the cat I'm up. Yeah, I'm a cat up. There is, no. this is highly unusual. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've developed this sort of relationship. Uh, so That's you a barb and w- <laughs> scratches Yeah, this history. is just a barb and scratches yeah, thing. They have history. You know? Do you want to try and pick up scratches? Yeah, why, you, why are you saying strength it like that? Okay. is like 20. I'm going to lose my Scritches is good. Well, Scritches no, is going to use dex. It's dex. This is to resist. Yeah. So roll me strength to get him. And you're going to have to be a 26. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you would have roll a 20. Roll a natural 20. It's not an auto crit, though. Uh, that's going to be a 11. Yeah, just <laughs> does the you know cat water thing, keeps flipping out of your hands <laughs> like and like landing perfectly down where they are. I'm good, Bob. I am good. Thank you. But I'll be fine. And then begins to lick the places you touched. Okay. <laughs> And they they land back on, on the paper. Yeah, 
can I? They're, they're already cat, guys. They're already what? like pushing open a drawer and shoving the piece of paper. I into hold the, the drawer. drawer open. Hold on, let me see this paper. It's like, you Far, but it's on the paper. This it's a list of uh, seekers and next demigods, which yeah. is not for your eyes. Why claw. is it not? <laughs> it, like goes to claw at your hand. <laughs> Like, I seriously. swipe it away. <laughs> it was, and now it's like <laughs> the cat's like, like oh clawing and clawing, gosh. and then stops for a moment, focuses. Let's not take this the biggest cat I've any further. Oh my! What's gonna happen? I'm nervous. I don't like being where I can see a rom. Shit. <laughs> it makes me nervous. We should not take this any further. Summons a treant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally. Finally, we're using Finally. these cards. And the cat just gestures towards the fireplace, and the fire begins to boil out of it. What? I don't want to make this a thing. We've already <laughs> had one student injured today, but you cannot just take my things. And the fire leaps up again. Well, I guess not now I can't. Um, <laughs> we know where Barb's going tonight. Uh, Barb, I, I kind of like tap on my hip where I put the scry pad. I think we should just go. Oh, yeah, you probably have access to all of it. Okay. Th um, thank you, Scritches. We're sorry that we've disturbed you. And Lucille. It's nice yeah, to meet you. Yes. It is so nice to meet you. Oh, it was wonderful to meet you did too. You, did you make those? And I point to like did. all like the knitted stuff. I knitted that and I knitted those and I made the curtains and that mm. blanket over there and those doilies. I made all of those. Oh, God. You'll have Splendid. to knit, knit something for me sometime. Oh, well, yes. I will knit you a, a blanket. Oh, you know, <laughs> I'll make a nice blanket for that wolf of yours. Oh, my gosh. Make a, like a little thing. Oh, yes. yes. A little, That's a very little cute. kerchief. Oh, yes. What colors? do you like my dear um i like Bisexual. dark blues <laughs> <laughs> i like dark blues but her eyes are purple so oh dark be... blues and bright purples that sounds lovely <laughs> i'll work on that great i'll come back and <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> by commission i just no got, problem just ordered from etsy um, yeah i just ordered from a custom etsy shop <laughs> uh Okay, well, we'll probably go for it. I need to come back to get those papers, those scratches, because I'm, uh, I'm the assistant for uh, the dean, and he <laughs> asked me to gather some Your stuff what? for him. We when, can talk yeah, about wow, this what? later. Huh? Um, when the dean signs an order, you may have them. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll just go get the warrant. All right. The warrant. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> scratches. Goodbye, students. No. So... I don't think we should ever go around asking who S is. What if that's clearly not S? Well, now we have two suspects. It's Sosomu and Slugs. And my my instinct is saying Sosomu. It's a fucking cat, guys. Why don't you help me out there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cat yeah, that the guys cat. could Teacher. kill. Like, nobody could kill it's it. No. I wasn't trying to kill it. I was just trying to get stuff. The guys weren't trying to get a piece of paper from it. It's also yeah, it's also a, it's, it's also a teacher we all should have ganged. I mean, we were yeah. just doing something scary. I, I yeah. can't Listen, I've I conquered that cat that once before. I can conquer them again. <laughs> <laughs> I beat that cat once. Um, yeah, so, so my if I and also if I, you know I mentioned like Sosoma is my who I think it might be. And while they talk, can I cue into Luna and see what she's finding? Yeah, Luna is now at one of the side doors and is sniffing around it and like looking towards the door and kind of clawing at it and like is obviously communicating that wherever he was, he went through this door and outside. Can I have her look around and see where she is? Well, she can't open the door. Well, like, like, well, like where the door is, can she look oh, around? Oh yeah, totally. Like, where is so she? again, if you've seen the map of it, so if there's the north side above the, the Arboretum, that side door there is where Zendar went out. Okay, uh, I'll have her come back then. Right. And she runs back. Yeah. Are Please. you gonna Are you gonna tell us about the thing that you just got? Yeah. Or look oh, at it. This? Oh, I'm no. Probably just go. Okay. You guys, you guys don't know I have it. Right. No, we don't. Yeah, I didn't see it. Are I'm you, keeping it till I am alone. Are you heading to your rooms? Because it's gonna be lights out in like half an hour. Yeah. Well, I I say it's been a long. Say, it has been a I, long I think day. Luna saw the doors and I went out of. Out. And our left. Like out of the temple. Oh, he went through it. What? There's a side door. We've never been through. Luna smelled him through should that we, door. Should we go look? Could take a little peek. I mean, why not? All right, we sure. 
We're already kind of How sneaking around. How far away around. is that door? So it's literally here between East Red and East Orange. So it's right next to where you live going, oh. you know, the way. Um, where east. Was For those listening at home, Sorry. I too couldn't see shit. Where, uh, next to the computer. where where was Scritches just now? So you and Scritches were in this empty office here. Directly it's across, across the hall. The way. It's across the hall. So I was like, yep. let me tune into Luna. And right. she's fucking. He's literally right there. So as you walk name. outside, Luna's like, hi. Yeah. I swear to God, you're, you're, you're tuning yes. into her. But she's looking at you. So you see yourself tuning into her. Yeah. I swan to freaking John. Like, yeah. you just like, your exactly. Ram starts overloading. Yeah. I say, so I say, oh, oh, when I said a door, I meant the one that's literally right oh, that there. Yeah. Apparently. It's literally right there. Um, So we can literally take a peek in because it's 15 it's feet away. Right yep. Yeah. I was going to say I had things to do, but since it's 15 feet, feet away yeah, yeah. And then, right. it's so convenient <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah i'll go open that door so baby you, yep, you open that door there's a audible beep uh, a light uh-huh. above it shifts to <gasps> blue and outside it is this expanse just like before this rocky long expanse of this floating island that you all are on and some of the bridges that go off it what is so it goes this? outside yeah it goes outside is, it, is there an alarm going off now? I mean, a light. There was a beep, and a light turned color. I mean, someone knows we opened the store. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Do we see Zendar? No, you don't see anyone. And it's it's getting dark, but it's a pretty clear night, and there's not a lot of stuff to block your view. And Luna isn't like a familiar. Like she can't just like poof away. Like I can't send her out, and then she'll magically find her way back. I mean, she can go and find her way back, but she, but she's a wolf. Yeah. Yeah. But she can go hunting. Guys, I'm really wanna... not up to just like yeah. go back outside. I we've barely I'm made tired. it out of outside should three we, we times get, if this, today. If someone is cued to this door, we should get away from it as quickly as possible. And our good thing our bedroom is We're right next <laughs> door. Right next yeah. to our room. Way. Convenient. Sorry. Yeah, I guess I guess we could go to. Uh, I'm gonna go get a breath of fresh air on my own though. Okay. In the arboretum. I gotta go take care of something. Okay, so you go to the arboretum. Yep. All right. I'm gonna head to um, the dean's office. Okay, you go to the <laughs> dean's office. What are, the, what are you two doing? I'm, gonna I'm go back going back to the, to the room. The room. Okay, you A two Tudor both go Janice back to the room. Scene <gasps> is so rare. Ooh, <laughs> All right. You guys start writing it right now. This is day one. This is my rare pair. We had our camera uh, class right. together. So you go into the arboretum. I'm assuming read. looking for the rabbit. I mean, well, if no, it, just if to go it, read. I want to I read, but I mean, if the rabbit's there, I'll say hi. The rabbit I, totally jumps up onto the, the your bench. The only yeah. reason to go to the yeah. The only reason. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna, looking I wanna, for the rabbit, right? I want to be alone so that I could read what she gave me. All right, start there. Oh. Are you going to read it out loud? Are you going to read it out loud? I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it to myself first, and then maybe. <laughs> for the audience at home, <laughs> Astrid is now reading a note to herself. Um, and so Astrid opens up this very pretty letter that says Harold Medina's journal is located in her office on the shelf behind her desk. It is a small book bound in crimson leather and held shut by a living rose. Do I know where her office is? Yes, you know exactly where Harold Medina's office is. I wrap this up and I think to myself, it's just so stupid. And I get up to try to go to Harold Medina's office. All right. So you're heading towards Harold Medina's office. You're heading towards <laughs> the, dean's uh, office. the dean's office. While that's happening, you two enter your room and are in there for exactly five seconds before there's a knock on the door. Okay. Uh, but what do you guys do in that five seconds? Cause yeah. Give me the scene. Give me, <laughs> the, give me the scene. scene. Yeah. Give us the scene. <laughs> Theodore. I oh, no, no, no. <laughs> See, you know, I've always been in love. Now that we're alone, <laughs> I've always been in love. I've been with wanting you. to tell you something for so long. Do <laughs> uh, either of you answer the door? God, do we have to? Yeah, it, is, yeah, it has to be. It's, it's just Janice and I looking at uh, each other, going, "We literally just stepped <sighs> in." <sighs> so tired. Okay, um, open the door. And there's Malvorn. Good oh. evening. Good evening. We need to talk. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Janice closes. Janice is like, but Theodore's here. (laughs) (laughs) Janice is like, oh my God. Theodore, my roommate is here. (laughs) Uh, I can go. We need (laughs) to talk. And he gently puts a hand on your shoulder and guides you inside. (laughs) Okay. He's 14. Um, and then the door closes behind you as that's happening. Jump over to you outside of the Archon's office. Uh, 
see anything? Anything no. out of the ordinary, uh, Brian, no. anywhere? So there's like a door with glass on the front, and last time you were there, there was a light on inside. There's no light on right now. Uh, okay, I'm going to try the door. Okay. Locked. Add sound effect here. Uh, <laughs> looking around, do I see any... No giant floating beholder anywhere nearby. <laughs> um. I, I, I bend down, uh-huh. and can I at least slide like just like a bit of my fingers underneath the door? Sure. Um, and like, then like like have bone fingernails grow or uh, whatever. No, I I hold it <laughs> Pardon there. Pardon me. And I don't fucking play my character <laughs> wrong. I swear. Um. So I'm I'm starting to stick a bit of my hand underneath the door. All right. And I start, ow, 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 as you hear a snap on my wrist. Okay. As the skeletal structure of my hands starts to come out of my hands, okay. leaving just the flesh. Sure. And I'm casting Mage Hands in the die of skin as bone hand. Right. Um, and I want it to go underneath the door. Right. Um, and starts. First, I just want to feel for uh, any sort of locking mechanism on the other side. Okay. All right. Um, do you have to see to be able to use Mage Hand? Do you have to see it? Listen. I mean, I, I, I can control it. I'll give you this that I that I can. I'm only getting a feeling right now. No, I get no. I get you. Okay. Here's what I'd want you to do. I want you because you can't see. I want you to roll investigation with disadvantage. Once made, you can use your action to control the hand. It can move up to 30 feet at a time, but it can't move more than 30 feet away from you. The hand is able to man- manipulate objects. Open an unlocked door or a container, but I'm just looking for a lock. Put away, again, item out of an open container or pour out vials of contents. Nothing about sight, huh? Uh, no. Okay. Um, then just roll an investigation. Yeah. Yeah, and the lock isn't the only thing I'm curious about. Of course. As one might imagine. Sure. Fucking my butthole. Uh, <laughs> um, it's a three. Oh, uh-huh. well, I mean, you fumble. Oh, we say. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, well, fuck this scene then. <laughs> you fumble around, you get to the knob, but it's not like one of those locks that turn. There's obviously a key lock that lock this door. Okay. So you, you need a key to unlock it. There's okay. just a flat surface on then the other side. I'm going to sit down on the bench yeah. outside yeah. with the bench that you and I love. The audience yes. loves it. No one's forgotten it. Um, I sit down on the bench and I'm just chilling and in my mind slash in with the bone and I'm, I'm hiding where my hand is. Yeah, sure. My hand is just a, uh, like a limp bag of finger flesh right now. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. That is Bingo. Abs- Bingo. <laughs> wow. Um, limp bag of finger flesh. And I, I am going to, because I have an idea what the room looks like. Yeah, totally. So I just have that. I'm going to go to where I remembered the desk was, climb on top, grab any piece of paper I can find. Okay. And bring it back out to me. Okay. And and I'm, if I see someone coming, I'm obviously not going to do it. So I'm going to clock back and forth real quick to see uh, whatever's going on. Um, right now, and, nothing. And I'm just like... It's just a piece of paper. Just give me a piece of paper. I would like you to roll. I mean, call high call. or low. Call. Okay. Uh, hi. I haven't gone wrong with that. And it's high. There we go. So you feel somehow. Yeah. Your bone fingers grab a piece of paper and begin dragging it towards the door. As that's happening, you can hear someone coming around the hallway towards you. Pause there for just one second. Jump back into you two with Mal- with, uh, Mal- Mal- with uh, Malvorn. Malvorn has made himself comfortable at your table. We have a table. Yeah, you're yeah, on that table like in the middle. Whole... With the, we have with like the chairs. our four beds. We have like a fireplace. Yeah, and like yeah. a table, and then the picture, I think. Mm-hmm. And then the door to the and shower the door room. To the, the magic <laughs> shower. Yeah. Magical the magical shower. shower room. <laughs> Where are the others? I don't know. <laughs> Having <laughs> literally, dinner. <laughs> literally, you guys don't Actually, know. Actually, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they went off on their own. We need to talk. About ab- what? About this evening. About the events that have transpired. Well, okay. Talk. All right. 
Here's what I understand. <laughs> he came to us. Things are far worse than the instructors are letting on. These malcontents have recruited many others, not affiliated with the temple, to the point where the gods themselves have grown nervous. This temple is no longer a training ground. It is an academy. They are making us into warriors to hurl against the others in a desperate attempt to defeat them. How do you know all of this information? I have my ways. I look at Theodore like, mm. so what is, what do you plan on doing about this? I plan to break out. Oh. You want to help the rebels? You all seem competent and no, I want to help the rebels. I want to help craft my own destiny but it can't be done here not any longer so I want out uh, and you want us to go with you yes I want your help to get out what about your housemates mm. perhaps some of them don't you think it, don't you think it would be better if there are more of us I think the odds are better if there are more of us who break out not necessarily those who go with us. A distraction, a few sacrifices will be necessary. How do we know we can trust you? What are, what are your options? Trust and don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> Our options are fuck you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've not been the most friendly person to my friends. I'm not the most friendly person, but I've got information. Fair. Well, we have ears, so make us trust you. What do you wish to know? So, who, so you know the, you know of the group of students that are trying to break into the temple? Yes. And you won't tell us how you came about with the information of, that you're bringing to us. If you wish to know, it came from my father. But your father is the god well, of order. Not from my father, but from some of my father's underlings. Um. Okay. Why do they want us to fight other students. They need someone to. Why can't they do it themselves? Because the gods can't be that heavy-handed. Last time they were, it created a war. They wished this to be taken care of quietly, by us. It's our problem. As they see it, it should be handled by us. Why is it our problem? They haven't been there for us to do anything. Demigods are causing problems. Demigods need to solve them. Simple as that. So you're n you're not aligned with the temple, no. or with the with the other students. As you should have seen by now, I am aligned with me. That's good. I'm still very confused why you would come to us, but I think we can think of about I, this information. I did the math. You're the most capable. It's been the obvious math. since I've been here. In this one day, the we've one proven day. we've proven ourselves. All you have to do is just beat him once, and it's like <laughs> he's, yeah, he's right. like, well, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, I'll be noticed. That is my message. <laughs> what? Get back to me when I you have an answer. Noticed. Oh, I I'll be it. noticed missing. Sorry, I, I should have completed that sentence. I thought he was just saying that. Just like, I, I'm going to be noticed. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> beautiful. Good evening, Theodore. Janice. And he gets up, flips his cape, walks to the door, and leaves. What a twat. <laughs> <laughs> Janice. 
<laughs> oh my god oh my god <laughs> holy shit that was so oh. fucking good all right all right so it is around five or six in the evening actually probably more towards six right now okay you've had a couple of classes well zendar has had a couple of classes and you've had your divinity class and a couple others. And right now you're kind of in this in-between period. Uh, and you don't really have, have anything scheduled for the rest of the a day. So you're kind of like independent studies, right? You can just do what you want to do um, until dinner. So what would Zendar be doing? How long does he have? Uh, he's got, I'd say about an hour. All right. Well, first he's going to find Sosomu. Okay. So I, where are you going to look for Sosomu? Probably he's going to look in the room first where he mm -hmm. would already have been. Yeah. So is she in the room? Okay. With him? So you go into, uh, was it East Red, you guys are, or West Red? West Orange. So you go into West Orange and you open up the door to your room. And, you know, in your room, it's, it has a bunch of orange fabrics and tapestries and everything. And they've put in one of the pictures so you can touch the picture and instantly be transported into the arena. There's still some holes left where they haven't filled in the other pictures yet. And the only other person in the room is Cree. Now, do I talk to Cree or do I keep going on my mission to find Sosomu. Well, you can't. I mean, you've opened the door and Kree has looked up and looked at you. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. So I can't really. You could just like slide I out, I, I suppose. I can't really just duck out. Uh, or can I roll a stealth to try and avoid being You can being try seen. to roll a stealth to be a, to be avoid seen by Kree. Oh, shit. Um, that is a total of 26. Okay, so you crack the door open, you see Kree and no one else, and you just, you know, slowly, slowly close the door. And, and like, as you're closing, you're kind of looking through the crack, and you notice Kree look up just as the door is shutting, but you don't think you were seen. Yeah, yeah. so he knows someone was there, but not that it was me. Yeah. Okay. Um, Why don't you mute that? Yeah, I, will I got it. That. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm going to find Sosomu. Um, and I will for next, I'll check. Uh, is, there, is there a teacher that, uh, that is sort of oversees who's in what classes? Is there like a secretary or something of that sort? Not really. I mean, each of you has been assigned uh, one of the heralds as your kind of like go-to teacher. So you could go and talk to them if you want. Are they the to. one who chooses our schedules? Uh, not really. I mean, you guys were just offered schedule. You, you just kinda, you're told what classes are available, and then you go to whatever you want to go to, except oh. for the mandatory ones like, you sure. know, like uh, divinity and that not. But you you were assigned. Uh, so everyone was everyone was assigned a teacher that kind of was their representative. Okay, yeah. and you were assigned Harold Medina. Of course, I was. Um, okay. So I would not go to Hell Medina. Okay. I would probably just check the dean's office. Okay. All right. Because I, I've been meaning to stop by and see who the dean is. Sure. And just like kind of figure out what I'm up against. <laughs> and also he could probably tell me the schedules of all the students. Sure. Okay, so you are walking towards the dean's office, and you're walking along the hallway with the uh, all with that giant glass wall on your right that leads into the arboretum, mm -hmm. and there's several of the teachers' offices up against that, so that the front, you know, that basically their offices look out over the arboretum. Because there's a a glass uh, back wall, and then a little kind of box of a room out from it. As you're walking past these offices, you notice uh, Sosomu in the Arboretum. Oh, okay. That's convenient. Um, I will enter um, quietly, and I'm going to attempt to sneak up on her. Okay. So you walk into the Arboretum, and it's like, again, it's like um, almost permanent 
daylight in here. It can shift much like the um, ceilings in uh, the dining hall. In Harry Potter? <laughs> in Harry Potter as well, in every <laughs> single movie that's used this. But yeah, it can like shift. So right now it's kind of like, like midday and the light is shining through this canopy of thick vegetation, kind of bathing every, you know, everything in a, in a bright green light. And she's just, you know, curled up underneath a tree, flipping through a book. All right. I will... Actually, I'm not going to attempt to sneak up, sneak up on her. I'm just going to... <clears throat> I'm just going to walk up, hands up, um, just because it's my custom to show that I am unarmed, sure. even when it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but she doesn't know that, mm -hmm. either way. Um, Good at reading people, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm pretty hard to read. That's true. Um, so I walk up to Sosomu and I say, um, Is there someone we could talk? So as you walk up, uh, and this is like a thing that, so that she does, like her tail just rattles just a little bit. She always kind of like, like when someone gets near her, her tail rattles a She's bit. She's got a rattle tail? She has a rattle tail. So it rattles oh just God. a little bit as you walk up. And she sees you and nods and she closes her book and places it into a little pouch she has with her. Zendar, what would you like to talk about? Well, it's a bit of a touchy subject. I'm not sure if we should speak about it in the open. Hmm. Where would we go? That's a good point. I suppose it's better if we go somewhere where we have an open view of all of the crevices around us. I have an idea. And she curls up and then starts sliding a little north and does her little fingers like, follow me. Yeah, I follow her. And you kind of walk around to the back of the Arboretum where there's this gigantic tree. And surrounding this tree is a cylinder of water that's hollow in the middle to give space for the tree. And as fish and everything going up, you know, three stories and water spills out over the top and down the back. And it crashes down in like this fake waterfall. And it creates a good amount of noise, but not so much that you can't talk. And she kind of curls around behind it. And there's like a, a little bench where it, the water curves over it. So you can sit behind it, watching the waterfall in front of That's you. Cool. And she was like, and she just kind of gestures to the bench and then curls up next to it. She didn't really need a bench to sit. She just sits on her own tail. So she kind of sits next to it. All right. Um, I would, I would sit on the bench, um, kind of wrap my tail up, uh, kind of push the my because I'm wearing like a kind of coattails yeah um because I have like a long coat and yeah. so I have to like when I sit down I have to kind of flip up my my uh coat from on the back oh wait um, you know what's even better what if when you sit down your tail just goes to the side curls around the coattails and folds them back oh yeah right? that's great yeah. yeah my my coat my tail does it for me yeah so I don't have to flip back my Right, it just kind of does it. Yeah, it you, does you, it you don't even think about it. The tail just does it. Yeah. Exactly, it, it pushes my coat out of the side so I can sit down, and um, I sit down and I look at her, and I kind of eye her. Um, can I get a sense? I mean, probably not, but can I get a sense of what she expects of you in general? E yeah, but like in this specific situation. Why don't you go ahead and roll an insight? Okay. Seventeen? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, what are you trying to figure out? I'm trying to figure out if she... Basically, if she is pleased by the fact that I'm coming to her secretly. Ah, oh, I see. Well... In general, you feel like she likes you, but she's almost completely opaque. I mean, everything she does is tinged with this slight hint of malice, almost, mm -hmm. but also she's a snake. So it's kind of hard to distinguish yeah. the difference. Um, I think I would 
look her in the eyes and sort of, well, not really looking her in the eyes, but like. When you do, by the way, when she blinks, her eyelids no, I, blink I can't sideways. See. Oh, right, because you wouldn't be able to see. Right, gotcha. Um, I just, I just, um, like, look towards her face yeah. and, and try as hard as I can to look her in the eyes. Sure. Um, or at least make it where she's looking in my eyes. Yes. And I say, um, I just stare kind of blankly and I say, there's a lot that's happened this first day. It's been quite busy. I'm exhausted, personally. A warrior never tires, but I feel that I have still not yet become a warrior. Well, that's why we're here, apparently. To learn how to become warriors. To learn how to fight the good fight. Well, we may not have that much time. Why would you say that? I've been... Watching, well, not in the way that you watch, but I've been observing, and uh, this whole thing is a powder keg about to blow. You've been here a day. It's not that bad. The teachers are unpracticed. Hmm. And the students are, especially that one group, the, the group that took down Malvorn. Ah, yes. They're quite interesting. They are dangerous, and I, I don't think the teachers can handle them. We're all dangerous. Oh, I know. And then he, he, he sort of smiles and... Um, and he's he's playing with his fingernails, just sort of like picking at them. And he has really long fingernails um, at the moment because he hasn't been cutting them. Yeah. And um, so he's just like picking the dirt out of his fingernails. But there, it's 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 clear that this is just kind of a nervous habit because he does it a lot. And sure. so it's it's very he has very clean clean fingernails. Sure. But it just looks like he doesn't because he's. Constantly picking at them. Yeah, constantly picking at them. So he starts kind of picking at his fingernails nervously, and he looks around, even though it doesn't do anything for him. He just sort of does it out of habit. Sure. Um, And uh, because he he tries to mimic normal... Right. um, Do what other people do. Yeah. Yeah. Are his nails black, by the way? Are they all black? Yeah. Yeah, just like his horns. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why they always look like they're dirty, which is why he is... Uh, subconscious about them. Sure, even though he doesn't know what they look like. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah. he knows that other people think they're dirty. Sure, he's been told it before. Yes, he's yeah. been told, are your fingers now as dirty? And that's why he's always picking at them. Right, gotcha. Um, it's one of the few self-care things that he does. Sure. Um, and he, um, he places a hand on Susomu's uh, shoulder mm-hmm. she allows that her tail goes a little bit and then he um he says this mark my words this is all going to fall apart and i don't want to be here when it does what would you propose Let's just say that we don't have to be simply sit by while it happens. We could even orchestrate its fall if we would, if we wanted to. And Sosoma looks around for a moment, and looks back at you, and slides closer until she's just a few inches away, and she leans in right next to your ear. You should be careful. About saying such things, Zendar. He, he sort of he smiles a little bit at that, and he says, "You couldn't tell me before." What was that? I'm sorry. You couldn't tell me before. Mm, I'm not trying to. 
I'm not trying to control you. I'm not trying to suggest otherwise. I'm just saying, if you want to do this right, be careful. I come to you because I am no leader. I know this. I am not a people person, as you may say. But I am a good spy, and I am a good assassin. And those may be more useful now, but in the future we will need someone who has more of a um, way with words. I see. So, you wish me to lead this rebellion of yours? Put my head on the pike, as it were? Well, you could call it that, or you could call it um, putting a crown on your head. Flattery. And she slides in, and her tail just kind of wraps around your legs a bit until she's right in front of you, almost pressed against you. I like you. I sort of trust you. We'll work on that. Maybe put a pin in this until later. But I'll keep it in mind. Fair. Fair. You are so lovely. And she uncurls from you. And she leans back. Was there anything else then, my dear? What do you think about Cree? Cree? Well. I mean, you know. Birds. (laughs) Head in the clouds. However. Powerful. Very powerful. More so than I believe he knows. Yes, I was hoping to attain some sort of relationship with him in in a... in the sense that he would be very powerful against me. And I do not wish for that to happen. So the dark wishes to befriend the light. You know what, yes. Perhaps you should just talk to the young man. I've seen how he looks at you. The Zendar, like, panics at that second because, like, he's like, wait, he's been looking at me? (laughs) Because he does not notice that sort of thing. When your back is turned away. Especially when he, like... I mean, like, he, he knows when people are watching him, but he doesn't... He doesn't see it as, like, a positive thing. Yeah, he's been watching you. When your back is turned, when you're doing your athletics. I've seen him. Talk to the boy. All right. I think I'll do that. Excellent. Anything else I can help you with? Do you know where the um, group members are now? They're the ones who took down Malfoy, the um, Theodore and um, Janice... Oh, yes, and she kind of glides over to where in the back there's this huge glass disc in the floor, right? And it's maybe like 20 feet wide and 20 feet wide, and literally it's just a hole that looks straight down into the valley below, and she gestures downward. They're hunting with Harold Ryle somewhere down there. Interesting. I was going to take that class, but it reminded me of Mother. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Perhaps sometime soon. Yes, perhaps, if we make it that long. I'm sure you'll be just fine. Thank you, Susanna. Of course. Have a lovely evening. And she goes, she kind of curls back up under the waterfall and pulls out her book again. All right. And she has a pen now, and she looks at you, and she nods, and she begins writing. And she glances up once as you walk away. And then she goes back to writing. All right. I think um, since most of the other people I wanted to talk to were in... Because I don't trust Malvoin's group because Malvoin has too much control over them. Fair. Um, And I'm not sure about the other group. Right. But I know... Zali and friends. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, but I know that um, 
the group, the main group, is uh, strong. Yes. And they they don't seem to be very into this whole temple thing. Yeah, Barb is pretty adamant about that. And yeah. Astrid voices off as well, yeah. So while I'm waiting for them, I think I'm going to check out the dean's office. Okay. So you step out of the Arboretum and back into the main hallway, and it's evening right now. Yeah. And you're kind of walking down again towards the dean's office, and this hulking shape is walking towards you that you quickly recognize as um, uh, Harold, sorry, not Harold, Vardon, as a Varak. Varak? Yeah. Interesting. Um, hey, Zendar. Oh. Hello, um, Varak, was it? And he stops for a second. He's like, yep, that's me. You are the demigod of waterfalls. I, I heard that you did well in the fight. Yeah. If it turns out a waterfall hitting me f- straight on makes me powerful. Wait, I was not supposed to talk about that. Shit. Well, it does. It makes me powerful. Apparently it does. I it was great. your strength. wasn't enough. We got taken down pretty well, but we had fun. Theodore is great. Have you seen Theodore? He's amazing. Yes, I, I have seen Theodore. Um, it's like three feet tall, and it's all courage and blades. Well, I, I hope that you uh, can expand your relationship with Theodore. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're. I mean, we're friends. Yeah, we're friends. Yeah. Yeah, he's like my best friend. Do you think that Malvon would get in the way of that? What of us being friends? And he kind of looks down for a second, thinks, then he looks, he looks a little worried. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. He's kind of a jerk. But he's right about everything. Yes. Like everything. He's, so He certainly is a jerk, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that he's right about everything. I would say that he certainly has information that others do not. Yeah, but he's got information. He's got a lot of... His dad gets, well, like, okay, I'm not supposed to talk about this, but agents of his dad, like... Give him information. Clue him in. He's also got a couple uh, items, like magic. Yes. They're powerful. Well, some people are chosen, and those people are more dangerous than others. But remember, Varrock, you and him are the same. You are both demigods. Just because he is chosen does not mean that you are any less. That's true. I am no less. I'm tough. I don't, have any, I don't have good ideas like he does, but I'm tough. Perhaps strengthen your relationship with Theodore. I think he would be a good influence on you. Yeah, I think we'll be friends. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to go eat. What are you up to? You want to go eat? Oh, um, I, I was I was going to stop uh, at Talk to Cree, actually. All right. And he just leans up and he slaps you on the back hard. Yeah. Good to see you, Zendar. No matter what people say about you, I like you. And he walks towards the dining hall. Like rub my shoulder uh, and kind of, all right, well, he is an open book. I should remember that. <laughs> um, yeah. He basically is just an open book. Here's all the things I'm thinking at the moment. Yeah. Um. And then I'm going to go to the dean's office. Okay. So you start walking, and I would like you to roll perception. All right. That is a natural one. Okay. You see and hear nothing. And as you're walking towards the dean's office, all of a sudden there is an explosion. There is this burst of blue light that seems to happen from just around the corner, burst out in a wave, slam through you, slam through all the rest of the temple, and then everything goes dark for a moment. What direction did it come from? So like forward and to the left. All right, I run in the direction of the blast. Okay. The the source of the blast. As you're running, red lights have now come on throughout the temple and sirens are going off. It... So it all kind of screws with your vision for a sec. You have to kind of readjust, yeah. right? Like if you walk down into bright light and your eyes have yeah, to readjust. Yeah, I'm just like staggering yeah. for a bit and then, yeah. So you run around the corner and I would like perception again. All right. Come on. Not another net one. Um, Is that seriously another one? 12. 
12. Okay, that's enough. You run around the corner, and the dean's office is like in the middle of this open hallway as a rectangle. And then behind it is the library and the dining hall. The door is towards the east. And as you run around the corner, you can see the door cracked open and light spilling out from the office. As if someone is in there. Does it look like the source of the explosion was from there, or does it look... Just like a light, like there's a light on inside and the door's open. All right. Um, Students are beginning to run through the hallways, right? And mm -hmm. there's some yelling. You see Harold Medina, you know, come around, and she's with um, Archon... Uh, sorry, Harold Medina is with Archon Dima, and they're talking and walking quickly the other way down the other hallway. Can I do the thing where I can turn off lights yet? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I would, uh, quickly just sort of step into the Dean's office and just, um, get rid of all the lights as, mu as many as I can that are near me. Probably. Okay. So you step into the Dean's office and just the first thing you do is snuff that light. Yeah. Light goes out. You're plunged into darkness, even though that's, you're plunged yeah. into sight, yeah. right? And you see in front of you a figure you don't recognize. What they look like? Uh, roll or perception. What do, what do they feel like? I guess fourteen. Uh, cat ears, furry, furry tail. I've never seen one of these before. Uh, have you ever seen a tabaxi? It's Probably possible, not. but uh, roll a history. All right. Fourteen. You've heard of a tabaxi. So you're assuming this is a tabaxi. Actually, it's 15, but um, it's a tabaxi. All right. Um, I say uh, I, I close the door behind me mm -hmm. and I say, um, Kitty got its paws wet. There's a growl <laughs> and you have to roll initiative. All right. Natural 20. <laughs> so I'll be going first. All right. Well, I'm not going first. <laughs> All right. So uh, the tabaxi lunges over the desk straight towards you and then kind of spins around you and grabs the door handle. Okay. And tries to Do open it. Do I not it. get an opportunity? No, because they can... They can, okay. Yeah. So, so they actually they they get around you and grab the door handle, but you've got your hand on it too. So we're going to mm -hmm. do an opposed strength check. Okay. Athletics. Uh, yeah, athletics. And I got an eighteen plus one, so nineteen. That's a five. So, yeah, they move so quick. You're stunned mm -hmm. how fast they are, and they're able to kind of like hip check you back get the door open and just get out so they are now out and running what are you what are you doing i need to find them i need to know i need to know yeah what what's going on got you okay uh sprint after them. all right i sprint after them okay so they go out and they go back towards where your um where the student dorms is and they're sprinting at full speed they throw behind them a series like a pair of daggers and they kind of fly past your head and slam into the wall. What are you doing? Um, did you roll to attack? No, or? I'm just saying. It. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I say, um, I don't want to hurt you. I just want to know what's going on. So they're still sprinting, not saying anything back to yeah, you. Just I'm, running I'm, at full I'm sprinting speed. too. Okay. Uh, uh, I would like you to roll a. Let's roll um, athletics checks to 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 see right. if you can catch up. I got a twelve. I also got a twelve plus one is thirteen. Okay, so you're gaining on them now. They're running towards the front doors, so they're about midway through the hallway right now. They'll they'll be at the front doors in two rounds. All right. Uh, what what is around? What can I what what can I use um, in the surroundings? Uh, well, there's like a couple end tables and you know torches and things like that. There are these ever burning torches that use magical fire that don't require heat. That kind of thing. I think I would um, as I'm running, just snuff out the lights um, as I go. Sure. Yeah. And like, um, so it's just like darkness is following behind me. Yeah, excellent. And um, 
just to increase my awareness of what's behind me and everything so I don't get attacked from behind. Yeah. And um, and also so I can sneak around later. Yeah. Um, and so I uh, I think I'm just going to launch some darts at him. Okay. I think I think I'm going to um, attempt to bring him down. Um, if I well, can I do um, non-lethal with my? You could like throw for the legs and things like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. Roll to I'm get. Do that. Do I get both my attacks? Uh, yeah. When you're uh, well, you're running. So well, yeah. Sure. Why not? Fifteen. Okay, so fifteen does not hit. You throw right. your little. Okay, right. sorry. Well, go the ahead. Second one is twenty. Okay, you throw the first one, and somehow they know it's coming, and they spin around and dodge it. And just as they dodge it, the second one strikes right in their shoulder as they're finishing the mm-hmm. turn, and they land on their feet and keep running, but their hand goes to their shoulder. Roll damage. All right. Oh, wait, it's 1d4. Um, there's my d4. Nine damage. Nine damage. Okay, it sinks deep into their shoulder. You hear like a, you know, a hiss and a growl, but they keep running. All right. Um, I'm just going to keep running after them and firing. I, I guess I... Um, if I if I get close enough, yeah. I'm gonna try and like run up on the wall and yeah. and jump in front of them. Yeah. Okay. So as they're running, they pull out a hand crossbow and fire back at you. All right. Uh, is a twenty-two gonna hit you? Yes. Okay. So that plunges into you for eight points of damage. So you shoot them in the shoulder; they shoot you back in the shoulder, <laughs> and then you know just the the crossbow goes into their a cloak and vanishes, and they're again just pumping, running. Uh, give me an athletics. And beat a, and beat a nine. Four. Okay, so they're gaining a bit. They're, they're separating the distance a bit. There'll be one yeah. more round where you can try and get right. in front of, of them. As you are sprinting behind them, all of a sudden Malvorn steps out from a doorway, just like innocently into the hallway trying to see what all the noise is about uh roll me in athletics not to slam into him can i do acrobatics sure to, like leap over him 24 okay so how do you get around him just describe how you get around him, Alvor. i i do like i i i um he's like barely steps out in front of me and i instead of um i i i i just say Hold your hands together. And I just leap up. And as he like, he just brings his hands together. And I like jump up and use that to launch myself forward. Sure, exactly. Or just like, like put your leg, you know, your foot on his knee or something. Yeah, and exactly. Over. Yeah. Perfect. So you just kind of flip over him, land and keep running. Don't even yeah. break a stride. Exactly. And then he's plunged into darkness as you're cutting off light yeah, behind exactly. him. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. All right. So uh, you're running up. You get one more chance to... To All right. Her to the, Come on, you know, athletics. Door. 17. <sighs> having trouble hitting that edge. Of, you're having trouble hitting that edge of the table, aren't you? I am. I'm, I'm really having trouble with Give it. Give me some more room here. That's not going to make it. Okay. Five. So she gets to the front door first, pulls out a, uh, like, from underneath her cloak, pulls this little silver rod out, taps it against the door, and you hear a, Bong, click, and the door unlocks, and she hurls it open and runs into the uh, like late afternoon light. Like it's about six six thirty right now. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna run after. Okay, you sprint after. Now you guys. What are, time is it? The evening? Yeah, it's about six thirty. The sun's okay. beginning to go down. Okay, it's good. summer, so yeah, yeah, it'll be daylight for like another half hour, hour. Okay, and she is now sprinting. A, you know, towards one of those stone bridges that arc off of this main stone floating island. So I haven't gotten the shadow teleportation yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, but as you're thinking about it, and you know, and you're seeing, there's like little pools of shadow you could get to. You start to feel 
like shadow begins to pool on your body and kind of pull forward. You can feel it tugging at you. Should I roll divinity? Totally. Is that just a straight end? Uh, it's your yeah. It's your um, plus proficiency. Yeah, it's your D twenty plus proficiency plus end. Okay. That's a nat twenty. Okay. <laughs> So you're thinking... <laughs> Nat 20 plus 6? Yeah, you just can't keep up with her. She's so damn fast, mm-hmm. right? And you're trying to catch up, and you're trying, and you're seeing pools of sh- of shadow, and then you can start, like, as you draw close to them, you can feel yourself connecting with them, and then all of a sudden, you just vanish from where you are, feel sucked along, and reappear in that shadow. So now you're directly behind her. All right. I am going to attempt to grapple. Okay. I'm just going to reach out and try and grab the scruff of her neck. Her acrobatics is a natural 20. I rolled so well, too. Uh, So you grab the scruff of her neck, and she spins around. And it's kind of like in slow motion, because you guys are this close to each other. And she spins around. And as she spins around, her claws come out. And these silvered claws that shine and sparkle with magic just swipe by your face as you lean past and she rolls out of your a grasp and is running again but you're still right behind her all right i at this point i'm just going to stop her so i'm going to um go for her legs with my with my uh dart power okay excellent all right um that's gonna miss and that Wait, what was it? It was an I, 11. Okay. Sorry, I knocked this. That's all right. Um, 11 plus 8? 19. 19. So what are you trying to do? Just hit her? I'm trying to hit her in the legs. Yeah. Okay, got Yep, that one definitely hit. All right. Um, 9 more damage. Okay, so you strike her again in the leg. She stumbles for a moment, stops and turns. The claws are out. What do you want? I want to know what in the world you just did to the temple, because if you can do that, then I may be interested in what you're talking about. I did nothing. We did something. I was simply here for this. And she pulls out this golden ornate box and then slides it back into her cloak. Why would you stop me? Are you with them? Who's them? The temple. The oh, certainly not. They let me go. You... Should, can I roll insight? Sure. To like, see what, if, if she's got, what she's got going on. 24. I mean, she seems nervous. Um, she doesn't want to fight, right? She wants to just leave. Mm -hmm. And she seems to be, but otherwise she seems to be honest with what she's telling you. What's in the box? I do not know, for I cannot open it. Well, let's say this much. If I let you go, you'll consider it a favor. Done. But I can do better. And she holds up her hand, and she has a ring on it. And the ring has the same, you know, uh, stone that the Seekers have. Yeah. Right? And then she pulls out from her pouch another one. And she takes her hand, and she places the ring inside it and closes it. You ever want to join us? There's your ticket. All right, I take it, and slip it into my like under my shirt or something um in the, like in my shirt pocket um and then i nod and say um i really hope i don't forget this i hope i don't as well and she covers her hand that has the ring on it mm-hmm. you're a shattering and there's like a swirling of magical energy and she vanishes all right um, where am I right now? You are outside the temple, by the front door, maybe like 500 feet from the front doors. All right. 
I am going to go back into the temple, but for now, I'm going to stay hidden. Okay. So you go back to the front doors, and they are locked. Okay. Uh, did I hear them close behind me, or was I just, you were just caught up busy. in the... Yeah. yeah. Um, do I know of any other ways in, into the temple? There's doors all the way around it. All right. Um, or you could climb to the very, very top and try and go in through the top of the arboretum. How about no? <laughs> Say it. Uh, I'm going to check the other doors. Okay. So you begin checking doors, and this is like locked, locked, locked as you're going around. Uh, roll me a perception. Seventeen. As you're doing that, you catch just the edge of one of the discs lowering beneath the temple, and you see Ar um, Archon Dima, Harold Medina, and Harold Vardon on it, and they're lowering towards the forest floor. Interesting. Do I have any way of following them? Uh, do you have any way of following them? Uh well, I'd you could scale, leap I'd off. Scale the, yeah. Yeah, you could leap off and plummet, I suppose. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm just going to note that, and I'm going to um, try and move towards where they came from, because I assume there will be some sort of open entrance there. It definitely came from underneath the temple. Oh, so okay. So you'd have to, again, yeah. Yeah. Um, that said, you could get back into the temple or into the rooms anyway, by going through the temple. Because you know there's a portal there. It takes you straight into your room. Oh, and you yeah. go right into the painting. That's fair. Um, I'll try that then. Okay. So you head into the temple. It takes you a while because yeah. it's a long hall. But yeah. you get into the temple. You get to one of the portals. And you step through it and appear in your room. All right. I am... Um I kind of sigh because I, I was I was out. Yeah. And I could have ran for it. You could have ran for it. But now there's something bigger than me. Yeah. And this is what I've always been trained to do. Sure. It's what you've been looking for. And so I I feel like I can do more here than I could do back with my mother. Yeah. And I'm also terrified of my mother, so I don't really want to go back to her. Sure. Um I mean, part of me does and part of me doesn't. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to also wait for her to come to me. Okay. Excellent. Um, so I'm, I'm in my room and- No one else is there. No one else is there. <sighs> I don't want to get caught doing anything bad because then they will assume that I helped them. Right. So I think I'm just going to walk back to the um, dining hall like nothing happened. Okay. Uh, excellent. Then you are walking back to the dining hall like nothing happened. Um, and we'll have to stop right there because that'll be... Actually, no, hang, no, no, no that, that's not going to work because they're in the dining hall and you weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So didn't everyone go back to their rooms? Everyone went back to the dining hall first. Like everyone had to meet in the dining yeah, hall. Yeah, I know. I know who met in the dining hall. But, but like, eventually they went back to be, the rooms yeah. afterwards. Yeah. So maybe it just took me long enough that everyone's back in the rooms by now. It's, well, you could also just wait. You know. Oh yeah, I could just wait in my room. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait in my room and just be like, "Oh, what? I've been here the whole time." Okay, so you wait in your room, and eventually, uh, Cree and Sosomu walk in with slugs. And then we were on the ground floor, and we were running around, and I webbed up some people, and there were other students, and I fought him, and he was a mate. And he's just going and going, and, and like, Cree seems interested, so Somo seems exhausted. <laughs> like, he must have been going on for a while. Slugs, why don't, why don't you give them a break ah! for a second? Oh, hey, Zendar, hey. I just sort of step out of the shadows, yeah. and I'm just like... So I, I take it it was an eventful evening. Oh, it was amazing. I got to go with Astrid and Theodore and Barb. And we was, it was, we had. Um, yeah, so you'll have to tell me about that sometime. Oh, I thought, okay. Did you not want to know? Well, 
I have a feeling there are more important things to learn. And I look at Sosomu. Oh, well, yeah, there was uh, other students. Students from before. And they ruined everything and killed a lot of people, including the old dean. I had a feeling something was off here. Oh, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was so much fun. And I got to call spiders and oh, it was great. I had so much fun. And he, oh, and he kind of like runs onto his bed and he's like bouncing up on his bed, like just too excited to even talk. I, I kind of um, walk over to Sosomu mm-hmm. and I'm like, is that true? Oh, yes. Seems you were rather premonitioned in your worries about the temple. Whole class, everyone massacred, and quite interesting players who revolted against the temple. The reason everyone here seems so green is because they are. They're barely keeping this place together. Like I said, a powder keg. Well, the powder keg seems to have exploded already. These are the remnants. He's one of them... A tabaxi. Why, yes. Hmm. How did you know? Well, I met one. Really? Met one, did you? Yes. We had a brief conversation. Mm. Tried to kill me and went on her way. How did that conversation go? And she kind of leans in a bit. Wasn't much talking. She had some sort of box that she took, I assume, from the dean's office. Have you told anyone? Oh, no. Hmm. Interesting. You may do with that what you will. Oh, I wouldn't share our secrets, Zendar. They're between you and I. Of course they are. A team needs trust, my dear. Otherwise, how will it function? I suppose you're right. In in that... Spirit, I'm, I think I'm going to go talk to Cree. He doesn't look very good right now. Do that. I'm sure her fingers kind of glide. And her fingers are like a little extra long. Yeah. And like there's another digit. And they just <laughs> kind of glide over your shoulder in a very strange way. And then she goes back into her nest and curls up. You mean another joint? What did I say? A digit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Another joint in them. Um. All right, so I walk over to Cree, and I kind of um, slowly, I, I approach him kind of slowly because I, I can't really see him very well. Sure. Um, and I kind of like just place a hand where I think his back is. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, Zendar. Oh, I mean, <clears throat> hey, Zendar. Are you all right? Oh, it's just it's a lot. A lot's going on. A lot of happened, and and like we were attacked, and. We could be attacked again, and a lot of people were killed, and like, like I didn't know what I was signing up for here. And Cree, we are demigods. This means that we're meant for a higher purpose. Fate, fate means that we are meant for something greater than ourselves. The other ones weren't. They're all dead. Perhaps that is what they were meant for. Or perhaps they simply failed. Uh, I don't want to be dead. I don't want to fail. Then become stronger. Become stronger than any of them so that no one can rival your power. I will. I will. I want to become strong. You seem really strong. I try. Well, maybe maybe you could show me how to be strong. I could certainly try. I don't know how much help I would be with your powers. I can't really see you when they're happening. Well, maybe that would help. Maybe, maybe having a... If I use my powers against you and you use your powers against me, maybe, like, it'll be t- hard and, and like, we can strengthen them by using them against each other. It's certainly a good idea. I thought about it. I thought about it a lot, actually. And he pulls out, like, 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 a couple blocks and things, stuff that he had, like a couple prisms. Mm-hmm. And he's like, if you create darkness and I create light and those overlap, like what wins? Is it darkness or is it light? How does it play? Is it a push? Is it a pull? Is it like uh, like a magnet? 
right? When you turn magnets against each other and there's that, like, how does it work? Like, I'm thinking a lot about this. I think we should practice. I think we should try it. All right. Excellent. And he looks a little happier and he smiles kind of like, like it's weird to see a bird smile, but you know, uh, kind of smiles. And he's, he's like, thanks, Endar. And puts a hand on your shoulder and the feathers kind of brush your neck. And it's like lovely. Like, like his touch is kind and gentle and the feathers feel warm and comforting against your neck. And then he quickly pulls his hand away. He's like, I, you know, I think, I don't know. I think maybe we could be friends, you know? And I just, and I just think that that'd be fun and like really helpful. I would for like us. that. Really. What? I would like that. Cool. I'd like that too. And then he gets embarrassed and like around, like the feathers around his face kind of like shift to red. And it's the first time you've seen his color shift and you didn't reckon, realize that he can shift, mm -hmm. but the colors, like, I guess you wouldn't see that, would you? No. You wouldn't see the color. Well, what you don't see is that the colors around his face shift okay. into red. Yeah. And he's like, okay, um, uh, okay, great. And then he gets nervous and kind of gets up and, uh, knocks over the chair and picks it up and uh, turns back to you and is like, yeah, uh, 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 anytime. And then stands there for a sec awkward, awkwardly and then just kind of turns and walks okay. away. After that extremely awkward exchange, <laughs> yes. I think I'm just going to go um, talk to slugs. Okay. Because I, I want what I want is an analysis of the fighting styles yeah. of the group. Okay. Um, I know he probably won't be able to give me a very good one, but I can definitely get something from of of how they fight from his story. So I'm gonna sit through it and just uh, do we need to role play that or do oh, you yeah, want totally okay? So Slugs is lying on his bed, all right, hand you know arms out, legs out in the middle of it, so it doesn't touch any of it, right? Yeah, and just there's spiders on him. There's like 12 or 14 uh, spiders. And he was like, oh, Harold, you did so well. <laughs> Justine, you were amazing. And they're all kind of like on him. Mm -hmm. They're their little hands waving about. And he's like, you were great. Did any of them die? Oh, and he gathers them close. Well, no, no, no. I take, I take care of them. Yes, but even when you take care of something, it can still die. Well, I mean, anyone could die, but... I take very good care of them. They're my babies. Aren't you? Yes, you are. Oh, well. Could could you tell me something? Sure. How was the group that you were with? How were they in a fight? Oh, I were I mean we they, they weren't there were only three of them. But they caught us by surprise. One of them pretended to be a dead girl. Pretended to be a dead girl? Yeah, there were these people poachers who were in the forest and Harold Rall tried to help them and they went away and then they got killed by an elephant or something and then they inhabited the dead body or like just looked like her and then just ambushed us it was amazing oh uh, you were attacked yeah there was a little there, were, there was a little kobold this big old turtle guy and there was just some like like small human like a child interesting um Wait, you decided to use her? Was that? You decided to use her? Which for one? For the fight? Who? The demigod of youth? No, 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 no. It was the demigods of incarceration, uh, surprise, and torment. Oh, okay. Um, so, after learning about that, I would just meditate on that for a while because... That's interesting. Totally. <laughs> that they, they, they attacked students. Yeah. And goes uh, through like, how they worked yeah. and what and what they were yeah, doing and everything. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Kind of gives you a whole blow by blow. In fact, acts the whole scene out with spiders, like assign spiders different roles and they all reenact the entire battle. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I also study the movements of uh, of the, the main squad. Yeah. Uh, squad rise. Totally. Uh, because squad. they could turn out to be friends or enemies at some point. The so. pack, as they've been calling themselves. The pack. Yes. All right, excellent. So I guess for the rest of the night, you just meditate on that and then go to bed. All right. Okay. We'll hold right there. Mm -hmm.